grog end. Eagles kicking off in the first half. Terry Jacks, just a few words before we start from co-commentator The Whale. The Whale said it's too early in the morning for him. Over in the country club dressing sheds before the game, over at BBC Oval, the boys were very confident of a win. This year they've played four times, they've had four losses, but it has to change sometime and I think today will be the day. What do you think, Peter? I think so. On the law of averages, I think they would have to be the better team of the day. Um, they haven't beaten them this year at all, but I think today is the day they've got to do it. All the fellows have picked themselves up, they've really psyched themselves into it. I think you'll find it'll be a big one. Thank you. From the kickoff, the ball's gone out, about 15 metres from Country Club line, and they've taken the play the ball there. Mark Shipley caught, goes back to head, picks it up, goes to Posse, just rucking it up, caught there by Kev Hickey. Goes to head, running on the open side, he gets sore almost around, but he's called back there. Alan Dunn at dummy half, he gets up, he plays it, Poston's there again. Dunn getting it, it's gone to Donga Shipley, running wide, two defenders in quickly to stop his progress. Plays it back there to Dago Thompson, Alan Dunn rucking it up and that's six. Eagles rucking it up, goes to Terry Jacks, goes out to Mick Walker. It's good to see the uh, marker there, hold his position there, instead of moving off it. Coming wide, Tony Jacks gives it to Kev Hickey and he's caught there by Mark Shipley. Going down the blind, Mick Walker, a loud call of leave him, and four's been called. Going the left now. They've got a man over there if they want to use it, but Alan Dunn getting, uh, head getting across there to take it. That's the fifth and last. I don't think they'll put the bomb up. No, they're caught there, and the ball will change over. Um, very tight game so far. Head right at upfield. Um, country club on the defence at the moment, trying to get out of their own territory. Um, the ball's been put down by Peter Spargo. Mick Walker has the ball now for the Eagles. They're throwing it around. Country Club. A penalty there goes to Country Club for a forward pass. Head takes a tap and rucks it up. Plays it back. It goes to Postons to Dunn. Dunn rucking it up hard, and that's what we want to see early. Running it up straight. Going to the right again. It's gone to Head. Shipley coming back inside, but too late. Plays it back. He didn't play the ball properly. He didn't go back behind the mark. And a penalty to Eagles. Country Club can't afford to get caught down their quarter for long periods of this first half and it's a big advantage when you kick off in such a tight game because you can apply the pressure. Eagles still just rucking upfield. Terry Jacks around and the golly wogs caught there by Mark Shipley in good defence. Kev Hickey a dummy half gives it to Mickey Walker who turns it back to the open side. Still going. There's an overlap here. Gavin the stick man George and he's caught there by head. Head doesn't like the stick man very much. The ball's lost there and it'll be country club ball. It's very vital in this first half that country club just consolidate and don't give away any penalties. Finals are usually very tight. Poston's there. Done, taking it up hard. Walker there. They've got to play the ball quicker but they're playing the ball far too slow. Giving the opposition much too much time to get back on side. And Spargo's made a half break and he's picked up there by stick man once again. Plays it back, goes to Poston's. Poston's to Dunn. Fifth tackle. And said, bring it the blind. He's caught there with the ball. And he's got to watch that when he throws that ball away. He should just put it straight down the mark. Penalties at this stage. A one all. With Eagles rucking up. Mick Walker caught there by Spargo. Goes to Greg. Gives it to Jaxie. And Jaxie's caught there. Mick Walker just taken across. Country Club have got to hold that mark like Alan Dunn did just then. They've got to get Eagles on the back foot. A gollywog there caught by Mark Shipley. Coming wide, Kev Hickey. Kev Hickey turning back inside. He just couldn't get the pass away. The play was offside. Goes to Mick Walker. The ball coming wide and oh, Mark Shipley gets him there. First change for Country Club. On comes Jared Alexander replacing Paul Andrews. Goes to Paul Shipley. Gets it. He's got the man inside, Jared Alexander, and he's caught there by Kev Hickey. Plays it back. Spargo. Spargo just bobbing and weaving. Anyone would think he was at Festival Hall. Gets it on the open side. It's gone to Dunn and Dunn's caught there once again. Plays it back to Dago Thompson. 
Thompson to Postons. Postons whacking it up. And he's caught there. Donga Shipley, that's the fifth, and they've just got to take it towards the touchline. Change of possession. Nothing very exciting in the first part of the game, but then again, you wouldn't expect it in such a, an important game. But that time then, they were standing flat-footed -foot and not moving up. It's important that they move up both sides of the ruck, like that instance, because that's where the tries will come. Now, Country Club getting a bit lazy there, Peter. Yeah, the Country Club aren't moving up. They, they go fine. They'll have to move up in defence or give the Eagles a little bit of room to move. They, um, they've got some nippy players and they'll be on the back foot. So Country Club, if they consolidate their defence and move up, I don't think they'll have any worries at this stage. Thank you. Yeah, up here in the commentary box, it's pretty hot here today. The ball's being played back now. Alan Dunn and goes to head, head rucking it up. Near his favourite man, the stick man. It's gone to Paul Shipley on the blind and oh, the ball's to ground. Referees will call it back. He's holding up play for a minute. He's calling out the country club captain, Peter Spargo, about something. He's calling out both captains. The nigger boy Licorice, the Mr. Stickman running back to his wing outside the gollywog. Play to resume. Eagles rucking it up hard, and that's been part of the difference. Men running onto the ball. Alexander holds the mark there. Goes to Hickey. Oh, they've got the overlap, but Spargo quickly onto the man. They come the blind side. It goes to Terry Jacks. And that was good work by Mark Shipley. Then he took two men out of the play. Mick Walker trying to do a Mexican hat dance with the ball. I thought he, most probably thought he had to bounce it every 10 metres. Must have been watching Collingwood yesterday. Anyway, country club with the ball and rucking it up hard, and that's what we need. Harder rucking. And that's another bad pass. You've got to hold that ball for six. On that occasion, it was three touches, and you can't afford to do it in these type of games. Very hot day at Tuong. Loud call there by head. Ball going the blind, it goes to Jacks. He's got Hickey outside, he goes back to the open side. Tony Jacks and the man coming around. Alan Dunn trail well then. Ball to the ground, country club ball. They might have been lucky to get away with that because I thought Alan Dunn knocked that one down. Yeah, well I think Alan did actually knock it down but he did well to get around there and cover defence. Rucking it up. Oh, a cut out pass there. Paul Andrews read that one well and let it go. Just went near his head. They go. They're just standing and passing. No one running on, and that's the big difference in the early part of this game. It's gone to Mark Shipley. Gives it to Spargo. Spargo trying to come back to the right hand side. He's caught there. They're still not making any ground, and this is vital. They've got to make this early ground. So he plays it back. He had a man over then. It might have been an idea to let that ball go, but that's six. Now they're not marking someone on this side. They had two men standing on the blind and only one attacker. Terry Jackson, he's run around behind. That's got to be a shepherd. He's been doing that a lot lately. Haven't been getting away with it. And as they say, if you can get away with it, well, you may as well keep doing it. Hickey coming around. Oh, Greg stepped back inside and he's just been touched by Alexander. And that was poor football. He should have had him a lot sooner. He lost his footing. But he should have been standing wider. Hickey. They're not moving up both sides of the ruck, which is evident there. But head quickly onto Jacks there. And they've got to move up both sides, so when they switch it back to the blind side, they've got it covered. Ball going out. Oh, that was close again. And they're just last-ditch touches now. They're not taking them front on. Tony Jacks, and he takes it. Looking for support inside, but no support. I don't know if the talking's broken down, but uh, evidently something's gone wrong out there. Yeah, I'd have to agree with you there, Butch. The, um that they aren't moving up the country club boys. They've got to sit, there, sit down and start talking. That's what the problem could be. Um, as you said, there's too many last ditch efforts to the body stop the men there. Um, they've got to move up, keep moving up to them. As far as their attack is concerned, they should have been out of their, um, out of their line there by now. They've, they're not running onto the ball. They're not moving up both sides. And as you can see, they're trapped down there again. They'd only be about 15 metres from their own try line. And they've got to do something. They've got to move up. Head coming across quickly to get the stick man, his favourite player. It's gone from Baldy Wayne. 
Wayne at dummy half, picks it up, it goes to Mickey Walker. Watch the man coming from behind, Gavin George, he's taking the ball, but they've read that one well. Actually, they're making a bit more ground in defence now. Kev Hickey going around the back of the play, Spargo picks him up. Hickey plays it back, goes to Tony Jacks, to the stick man, right around from the far wing, and it's been knocked down by Peter Spargo, six to go. Either that or Cole was wiping something off his bald head. No, six to go. Hickey rucking it up, he's caught there by Paul Shipley. Paul Shipley plays it. Sorry, not Paul Shipley. He plays with himself. Anyway, the ball's come to the open side. Long pass. It's gone to the gollywog. They've got to get the man inside there. And that was well done by Head. He's doing a lot of good defence early. Possibly a country club. Their biggest fault in this first half. They're not getting into defensive uh, positions early enough. Uh, something just got in my eye there for a moment. They've played it, they're going the open side, it's gone to Wayne, Wayne bobbing, gone to Mick Walker, to Kev, and Paul Shipley picks him up. It's gone to Terry Jacks, Terry Jacks, and Jacksy coming around, and Dago's read that well. Country club too slow to play the ball, they're waiting too long, they're giving Eagles far too much time to reform their defence, and this is bad, that's bad. Jimmy Gibson caught there, take it back to the mark Jim, that's right. Goes to Jared Alexander, the Paul Shipley, and they're getting bogged down in the middle. They've got to get out and make blokes like Mick Walker run around. Tony Jacks. As you can see, they had the half break there then, but they couldn't capitalise because they dropped the ball. The ball went to ground, and you've got to, they're the ones that win you the game, those half breaks. Jacks plays it. Goes Ele coming out to Bluey Jacks. It's gone to Wayne. Jared Alexander around the back. Paul Shipley takes him. Defence reforming. They're not reading that play around the back too well yet. Wayne's got it. It's gone to Kev Hickey. Kev Hickey steps back inside, but Gerald Alexander gets him. A flick pass just up to the ball-headed Wayne. He's stick man caught there by Jim Gibson. And Wayne goes from dummy half, but that was the sixth touch anyway. Now, Country Club have to hold this ball for six touches, wouldn't you say, Peter? That's right, Michael. That's right. They've got to ruck it up, keep ruck it up. But they're not, they're not hitting the line enough. They're trying to do too much early in the piece there and, and not get out of that, out of there. They've got to hit the line. See, they're throwing it around. Jared's running a cross field there at the moment. That's no good. They've just got to keep rucking it up and get right out of that territory there. Jared Alexander running across, and they haven't got anywhere on those six touches. They flat out reaching the advantage line, which isn't a good sign. The ball down. Eagles with the ball now. Terry Jacks gives it to Kev Hickey. Hickey back to the mark, plays it to Jax. Jax goes the open side, it goes to Wayne. Wayne playing it there, goes to Terry Jax again around the back, wrapping around Tony Jax. Poston's got him. That was a loud call there, get him from the sideline. A loud call, get him, Posse. And he got him. They've got to watch that one, they've got to mark the man all the time. Oh, and that was play on, they were lucky then. And that's six touches. Eagles seem seemingly doing everything right except score at this early stage. Which must be frustrating to them. They've got Country Club pinned down there. And they've just got to ruck it up. One or two off the ruck. That was the case where the man moved up quickly outside him. There was a gap. But he's taking the tackle himself. And they're going backwards. That's the most they've made in the last 21 tackles. Goes to Jared. Disco dancing in the centre of the field. Goes to Frank. Frank stepping through. And this is the biggest break of the game so far by Country Club. And that was the sixth. So finally we see the immortal Frank Spencer chopping his way upfield. Terry Hutchinson on there. Sponsored by Elastoplast this year. As his left knee will indicate. Kev Hickey bobbing and weaving, he's missed there. They've spun it back to the left. Keegsy caught there, Hutch at dummy half. They're still not reading that man around the back, they've got a one over. They've got to pick that man up. And Mori just dropped it. I don't know what he's clutching, but you know, I think the three balls might have collided then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's correct, Michael, that's right. They've got the overlap there, Dave coming through and he's been touched. But they're starting to get out of their own territory, and they're getting close to the halfway line. Get the camera and zoom in on 
much before. Abam Cole. <laughs> Country club, it's gone to Alexander, to Postons. Postons rocking it up. They've got to play the ball a lot quicker, playing the ball far too slow, as you can see. And that's a stupid mistake. And that's twice Country Club have been penalised for stupid mistakes in playing the ball, and you can't afford it. A bit hesitant there. They've got to move up quickly. Moving up now. Postons touches him. He's just got to keep those touches down, keep his cool. Hickey coming back into the centre, and there's a gap there. Men not trailing. But the ball's gone to ground. Yeah, they've got to capitalise on them, haven't they, Peter? That's right, Michael. They, they had the advantage there. They First time they've had the advantage this game, and they blew it there by um, Terry Poston's not playing the ball correctly. They're just stupid errors that shouldn't be made, and um, they could cost the country club the game. We'll see how far they can get in this lot of six tackles. It's gone to Jared Alexander. He's caught there. He gets up, it goes to Mark Shipley, to Spargo, to Dunn. Dunn trying to go wide. If he plays the ball quickly, Spargo should go to the right himself. Yes, he does, and he gives it out there to Darrell deep past Betts. Betts, he's caught there. Comes back and plays it. It goes to Spargo. Gives it to Dunn. It's backing up, and Spargo's made a break. Away he goes. Can they get him? It's Gavin George. He's got two men with him. He turns it inside, and Dunn puts it down, and that could have been a try. Oh, that could have been a try. They had two men over. They had Betts and Dunn. I don't know what happened then, but the ball's gone to the ground, and that could have been the try. That would have been the try that may have won the match because I feel Country Club to win this match has got to score a try with about very late into this first half because I think Eagles will go into the panic stage then, which you can see they have now. Um, they're running around, they're not quite sure, they're really on the back foot. So if Country Club can apply the pressure now here, they'll go into score. As I said before, it was good to see uh, a couple of Country Club players holding their mark when they touched a player. Paul Andrews did it that time and he got a penalty. This is the first time in the whole half that Country Club have been down in the Eagles quarter. And we'll see what they can do now. We'll also see if Eagles under a bit of pressure, oh, no. Eagles under a bit of pressure, what they can do. That should have been a certain try. As the video disc will no doubt show you. Anyway, Andrews gets up, it goes to, goes to Mark. Mark's caught there. He gets up and plays it. Goes to Alan Dunn. It goes to Spargo. Spargo coming back. Just caught there. Dunn passes it. It goes to Alexander. Steps back inside. He's beaten the man. He gives it to Dunn. He gives it to out wide to Andrews. It might have been better just not to cut the man out there, but to stand them up. Country club. It goes to Spargo. Gives it to Betts coming around. Betts watching the ball. And that's six. Alan Dunn caught with the ball, but on the six. Eagles under the pressure now as it comes back. Hutchinson stepping back inside and he's picked up there by Alan Dunn. He plays it back. It's gone to Mickey Walker. Mickey Walker two off the ruck and they're just standing there a bit now. It comes back to the left hand side. It goes to the Bully Wayne. Ball Wayne coming back, polishing his head again. <laughs> Trying to get a reflection into the opposition's eyes. Murray coming through. They're a bit indecisive in the players that they're going to take. Spargo touching him. Taking it to the left hand side. It goes to Wayne. But they had men over there and that should be a penalty country club. Oh, I disagree there, Mr. Referee. That should have been a penalty to Country Club. Oh. Mick Walker there, just, just diving at third slip to pick that one up. It's gone to Murray. He's stepped and he's beaten the play. But they haven't got anyone over, if you notice. The defence has got them well covered, but they're not calling the man they want to take. They panicked at the last minute then. The, and the stick, man, the stick man put that one down. Country Club with the ball five metres in. It goes to Paul Shipley to Mark Shipley. Mark will just take it up and play it there. Paul Shipley plays it back. They could have been penalised then for not playing it on the mark. Head taking it up. They've got to play this ball quicker. It goes to Alexander. He gets it to Paul Shipley. He's got bets outside. Oh, almost breaks the touch. But Wayne diving there. Sliding through like a slippery eel. Alexander. Alexander. Gibson, Gibson playing the ball, it goes to Mark Shipley, to Alexander, Alexander, wide pass to Paul Shipley, trying to do a bit too much now, Country Club, they're trying from the first, second, third tackle, instead of consolidating, getting into position. I disagree with you a little bit there, Michael, I feel as though they have got to try something in the games in the past, they've, um, as you said, they have consolidated, they haven't tried to vary the play too much, no imagination in the game, and I think this is what will beat Eagles today, is throw it out, use a bit of imagination early in the piece. 
I have to apologise to all our listeners today. It was advertised earlier in the week that Refidex Rick would be commentating. Uh, we left him on the cricket pitch on the far side and he mustn't have been able to find his way up here. A flick pass inside and, ooh, and it's been called touch and that's six. Men not trailing then. A very hot day today. I think a few Eagles players, they played in the reserve grade game. Fair enough, they won that game, but this is the one that counts. It's gone to Alexander. He's caught there by Wayne Creed. He gets up. A long pass. It goes out to Paul Shipley. Another long pass to Mark Shipley. Reaching for it. The ball's gone forward and Cole Clark will call it back. Across, the time, across over at half time, the comments from Foxy. Very, very hot up here in the commentary box. I'll have to ask them to open the door and let some air in. <laughs> Wayne Creed rucking it up. He's caught there by Paul Shipley. Mauling the marker. Mauling the mark. Mauling the man playing the ball. Mick Walker takes the tap, sponsored by Circus Star Time, he plays it back, it goes to Wayne Creed, gets it to Kev Hickey, Kev Hickey going uh, to the left hand side, throws a pass, a good player for us in the last few weeks for the country club has been Darrell Betts, known as DA for obvious reasons, and he's played very well. Paul Shipley, a bit indecisive on that occasion, country club, it goes to Jimmy Gibson, they've got to ruck it up. More runners. Spargo caught there. It's gone out to Jimmy Gibson, to head. Head to Frank. Frank having a look at the man then, Frank. And it goes to Greg. He plays it. It's gone to the left-hand side. Kev Hickey. Kev Hickey caught there by Paul Andrews. And the referees called both of them out. Now, I don't know what was in there. It looked pretty harmless. Kev Hickey might be lucky not to get penalised there for using an elbow but I'd say the referee will just let this one go and let the ball be played. He had a talk to both captains earlier in the game. He's walking across to the mark. It must be a penalty. A penalty country club. How are those penalties going? Barry Ross. Barry. Don't leave you if they're going to be faced, Barry. <laughs> Andrews has taken the tap, just taking it across field. And as you can see, the touches are getting a bit more vigorous now. It's a knock-on from dummy half by... There, that lation, that brother. And the brother, he'd gone back there now. It's gone to Mickey Walker. Mickey Walker plays it back. It's gone to Hickey. Goes to Terry Jacks. And they read that one pretty well. Mark Shipley, men coming around the back now. A good call then. And Stickman puts it to ground again. Stickman having a look at having a look at Dago Thompson. Mind you, he's not the most beautiful bloke you'd ever see. So, But they're caught there. No one running onto the ball. That's it, Postons, take it up. They've got to play the ball a lot quicker. Get him on the back foot. Goes to Spargo. Spargo turning inside to Mark Shipley. Mark Shipley goes back. He plays it to Jim Gibson. He plays it. It goes to Postons. Postons rucking it up. He gives a wide one to Frank Spencer. Frank stepping inside. I'd say go to, the, to your right, Posse. He's taking the ball around. Paul Andrews. Comes back the open to Jimmy Gibson. To Spargo. Spargo's got Mark Shipley. Stickman coming across, giving him a back massage with both hands. Mark Shipley gets up and plays it back and just running it from dummy half. Jimmy Gibson, it goes to Postons and the ball's gone to ground and the referee says, that'll be it and we'll swap it over. We can't keep statistics on today's game because Peter Spargo's refing, uh, playing out there, leading country club and he's the only one that can count past five. Gavin George takes it up, Spargo headbutting with his nose. Uh, Postons just taking the touch there. A bit of spite coming into the game now. Jack's running across field. Gives it to Wayne Creed. Wayne Creed puts the ball on the ground. He plays it. It goes to Terry Jacks. It goes to Greg. And inside the five, referee penalty. Eagles getting back into the game there. Country club, a last-ditch touch there. Comes out Greg backing around, and Jimmy Gibson didn't take the dummy. He took it. It's gone to Wayne Creed. They've still got him covered on that side. Eagles look very dangerous when they have the wrap and the man coming back off the runner. Jimmy Gibson comes up, touches Kev Hickey. It goes to Terry Jacks. Terry Jacks gives it to Bluey Jacks. And a forward pass, says the referee. Forward pass, but Country Club too slow there. There was an opportunity to score. Important fact in this game is Country Club, the last couple of weeks, have kept a fresh player until the second half. The fresh player this week is Terry Sills, and it'll be interesting to see what dividends that plays, especially when you consider some players have played in the reserve grade side for Eagles. Uh, Sills, he scored a good try last week, and so it's important to see what happens. Ball away. Bit too much desperation there. Postons, 
He gives it to Alexander. Alexander just walking it up. He's got to take it up quicker and they've got to play it quicker. Goes to Spargo. Gets it to Mark Shipley. Mark Shipley to Paul Shipley. But coming around. And that was good work by Paul Shipley to hold onto it then. Because the pass just wasn't on. We're getting into the vital stages of this half. And mistakes must be, must be wiped out. Dago coming across and he's got Greg there. Greg going back. He'll play it back to Tony Jacks. He gets it to Kev Hickey. Kev Hickey coming back inside the ruck as he does, looking for the runner straight down the centre, but there was none there on that time. He gets up, he plays it to Terry Jacks. Terry Jacks going across field again and Dago with another good touch. It goes to Tony. Tony giving it to Kev Hickey going around the back. Kev, they're just hanging off, but Jared Alexander gets him in the end, if you know what I mean. Hickey comes back and he plays the ball and it's gone out to Terry Jacks. Terry Jacks almost through. Paul Shipley's got him there. Dago in the centre there, defending his ring out. It's gone to Wayne. Wayne giving it out, and it's gone to little brother Tony, the fiery redhead, and he's put the ball to ground. Mark Shipley just taking the ball up there on the first touch. It goes to Dago. He gets it to Paul Shipley. Hard rucking is what's required. It goes to Spargo. He gets it to Jared Alexander. It's gone to Andrews. A man going around the back then would be vital. They've got to wrap more. They've got to back up when they make these half breaks. Done coming back. No runners, no one deep. And they're all standing together. Both sides haven't shown a great deal of depth in attack. And that's the sixth touch. That half-time hooter must be very long away. John Barsby, when we see him shaking it in his hand, we'll know it's close to half-time. That's the hooter. He's played it back. Jack's going across field again. One of his girlfriends must be on this touch line. <laughs> All the man's inside and the stick man coming inside. Two country club defenders were committed on that side. And now it's Maury Creed, one of the Mortine brothers, coming onto the field. Goes the stick man. Oh, and a cutout pass to Terry Jacks. The man coming around the back and they had a look. A good loud, loud call by Alan Dunn there. The referee has deemed that the ball has gone to the ground. The team that cracks first is going to find it very difficult to come back. Head caught there with the ball. They've got to play the ball quicker. Too much mucking around. Andrews, I'd say, playing for the penalty there. And he's got it. The referee must always favour the attacking side in that situation, I'd say. It's Spargo away. Spargo's going to score. He's going for the corner. Dive, dive, son, you're over. Great try, Peter Spargo. And Country Club hit back. And what I said a few minutes ago, the team that scored first, it could be vital on Peter Spargo. Have a look at Peter Spargo down there, looking very happy and well he should be. This is the first time that Country Club have ever led a side in a grand final. This is the first time they have ever led. And that was great work. Have a look at... Wayne Creed coming across then. He looked confident, but then he just couldn't get in. Spargo saw that score corner and just zoomed in like a Concord, landed in the corner, put the ball down. Mum's your uncle. What do you reckon about that one, oh, Pete? Definitely youth beat the age that time. <laughs> the ball's gone deep. Country Club have to consolidate now. They've made two clean breaks. And I'd say they're very unlucky that the score isn't 2-0 at the moment. But you can't rest on your laurels. There's a long way to go yet. Mark Shipley rucking the ball up, and he's caught there. He plays it back. It goes to Jared Alexander. Jared Alexander stepping and bobbing and weaving. He's caught there. He gets up, plays it. It goes to Postens. Postens gets it to uh, gets it out to Frank. Frank playing it quickly. It goes to Postens. Comes back to Alexander. Alexander running through. Flick pass. It's come off Eagles, and the referee says six to go, and that's a good decision. Terry Hutchinson knocking that ball down. I think it's important to note, and a penalty given. Terry Hutchinson wouldn't shut up. And I think it's very, very important to note that this is the first time in the three fixture matches this season that Country Club has scored a try against Eagles. And grand finals can be strange games. You can't go on the season's form. And as you can see, a few breaks coming there, especially on the bigger men like Mick Walker, who'd be feeling the pinch in this heat. Goes to Frank, and Frank plucks that one out like a watermelon out of a, out of a cabbage patch. Plays it back. It's Alexander going the open. Pass it, son. And he does, it goes to DA, and DA's caught there. That's fifth, they'll take it, they'll take it to the uh, right-hand touch line. And he didn't play the ball. That was poor work by uh, a couple of country club players. And they're lucky not to get a penalty there, Eagles, again. Country club can't rest, they've got to move up. They've got to, that's, that's poor again, they've got to keep moving. Eagles, it goes to the big Mick Walker. Mick Walker's caught there. He plays it back, goes to Terry Jacks. Tony Jacks, 
Terry Jack's doubling around. They've got the overlap and Dago comes in and the ball's gone down again. A very, very close half time. It's gone to Jimmy Gibson. Jimmy Gibson caught there. He gets up and goes to Postens. Postens gives it out there to Mark Shipley and Mark Shipley. They're finding more yardage now than what they did earlier. Touch is getting harder once again. It goes to Alan Dunn. Alan Dunn putting on a tiny bit of pace, but he's got to go for that gap. He's got to be decisive. He gets up and plays it. It goes to Postens. Postens to Dunn. Dunn gets it out there to Paul Shipley. And Paul... Oh, I apologise to Mark Shipley. Goes to Mark Shipley there. It's gone to Dunn to Postens. There's a gap again. Postens, go! He should have He should have kept going then, I think. And the ball's gone to the ground. But it's Country Club coming back stronger now. It's Eagles with their backs to the wall. And Country Club know the most vital time in this game is five minutes after they score that try because that's when they've given away a lot of tries during the season. They've relaxed. This is a grand final. It's not a fixture. Greg's starting to run off Kev Hickey. They picked it up well there. They're diving. They want to win this game. It goes to Hickey, to Walker. Walker sending it out now. Oh, and Mark Shipley getting up there very quickly. There's the half-time hooter. They've got a play until the referee signals half-time. They come across, and that's half-time. You want to stay here? What's that? You, you want to stay here and just say a few words at half-time? Hill. Back at the second half here now. Started. It's a long way up that hill. Country club at half time realised the game's not over. There's a long way to go. Mark Shipley to Paul. Knocked down, six to go. Boys know the game's not over and they're going to go flat out. There's a gap there. Andrews is through and all. Stickman coming across just got him. Goes to Spargo, going to the left. Goes to Dunn. Dunn. Oh, he's beaten two and he'll score! Oh. Linesman's flags up. Oh, so close. So close, that one, Alan Dunn, almost over in the corner. It's gone to Greg, rugging it up. It's gone to Terry Jacks. Terry Jacks caught that. Throwing the shoes away for this half. It's gone to Big Mickey Walker. Feeling the heat today, I think, Big Mick. Terry Jacks. And Kev Hickey coming through. They're trying to get their running game going. Defence is the essence in this half. And he's caught there by Postens. Postens getting up now. They know not to get sucked in. And they're just out there to play touch. Louis Jackson, he throws it. It's gone into the crowd. Possession will change hands. What's the time, Jack? As I said before, Country Club never have led in a grand final at half time. Jared Alexander caught there. Spargo coming to dummy half, gets up, plays it, goes to Paul Shipley, gets it outside of Mark Shipley. Mark Shipley coming back in. He's beaten the man. He's oh, almost beaten a second man. Eagles defence diving there. It's gone to Paul. Paul inside of Spargo and the ball goes to the ground. The referee says we'll change possession. Nice call touch on uh, Peter Spargo. Spargo coming back to play the ball. The boys starting off very far in the second half. This is a good sign. It's not a good sign if you're an Eagles supporter. Paul Shipley almost through there. Terry Jacks just diving and just getting him. Paul Shipley playing it back. 
It goes to Jared Alexander and oh, Jaxie didn't fall for that one and he's caught him. That was six anyway. Caught there by Jared Alexander. Mickey Walker taking it off the ruck. Country Club waiting still. They've got to move up in that defence. And he's caught there. Bring it back this side. It's gone to Terry Jacks. He's trying to go around Postons. The pass has come back inside. They're picking up the inside man, but and they've still got enough defenders there. Dago Thompson, and he's picked him up, and that's great work. Country Club not panicking today. They're getting the position, aren't they, Christopher? So you. So you. And the touch call there. Good layout touch by Alan Dunn. And it's important that they know when players are touch. Flick pass inside and ball to ground. Country Club ball. It's gone to Jared Alexander. And that's it. He's not being indecisive this time. He's taking it up. It's gone out to Postons. Rucking it up hard. He gives it to Mark Shipley. Mark Shipley caught there. He plays it back to Terry Postons. Coming the right hand side. Terry Seals the fresh man on. He's got in there and he's got to do a lot of defence this half especially. Mark Shipley nearly around McWalker. Walker reaching across with those praying mantis type arms and catching him. It's gone to Postons. Postons gives it out to Jim Gibson. But they've got to stand deeper and run onto the ball. It's gone to G uh, Dago. Dago throwing it to Dunny and that's six. And what do you think, commentator, co-commentator this half, Rick Donovan? What do you think about proceeding so far, having been previous captain of a losing country club grand final side? I think they're doing it the, the, the right way this time. They're taking their time, they're grafting away, and they've bustled Eagles so far, and that's what they've got to do. They've got to get up on Eagles and bustle them out of it, and exactly what they're doing now. And if they keep that up, I think they'll win. It's good to see, too. They're picking up the runner in the back play, which is something, you know, that we have been critical of. They weren't picking up that runner in the back play. Today they are. Greg comes the open side. There's still enough defenders. They didn't panic then. It's gone to Kev. Kev throws it out. Terry Searles is there and he touches him and that's the fifth touch. One to go. They've got to watch those men going around the back. Jared Alexander with hands on hips there. Come on, Jared. Mark Shipley coming off this side. Frank Spencer going on. Jimmy Gibson taking it up and he's caught there. He comes back and plays it. Jimmy Gibson plays it. Goes to Terry Sills. It goes to... Oh, you've got to clear that ball from the ruck. It's gone to Terry Sills. Terry Sills caught there. He gives it to Paul Andrews. Andrews, it goes to Jimmy Gibson. Jimmy Gibson coming across field. He gets it out to Frank Spencer, stepping back inside. Goes back to the left. It goes to Jared. Goes to Sillsy. And that's the fifth. Neither side making much leeway at the moment. And Jared Alexander caught there at dummy half. If you're going to go, you've got to set off quickly. It's gone to the stick man. Stick man caught there by Terry Searles. He plays it. Comes to the, this side of the field where Greg gets it and tries to turn it back, but Frank Spencer up there very quick. He goes to Kev. Kev will wrap around here. But he, oh, he should have given the ball straight away because the move was on, but he hung on to it, which was good fortune for Country Club. He goes to Mickey Walker. Greg running off him. Mickey Walker taken there by Frank. And Amber Fluids just arrived in the commentary box, courtesy of, uh, courtesy of uh, Bunny Thompson Meats. There's a gap. Alan Dunn caught there. Dunn gets up and he goes to Andrews, who gives it to Searles. Searles to Alexander, but they've got to be more decisive. Someone's got to run onto that ball. It goes around Dunn going around the back of the play. He's got Betts outside, but he's caught there. He'll come back. He'll play it back to Daryl Betts. Daryl Betts will give it to Jared Alexander. He gives it to Andrews off his hip. Eagles moving up there, looking a bit tired too. Paul Shipley on the field, rucking it up. And he's all, almost through on another diving touch on Paul Shipley. It would have been hard to stop if he got in the open then. It goes to Jared Alexander and the plan is to get it wide to the wing, wide to the wing. But they're taking it back and they're caught in centre field on that time. Country club have to defend now. Jimmy Gibson on the stick man. And Murray, Murray Creed having a look then. I, I don't know, you know, what he was looking at, but the ball wasn't it. Country Club ball, Stickman trying to grab at it. Country Club have retrieved possession. Frank Spencer doing the uh, soft shoe shuffle. Terry Jack's getting a bit, uh, acting like Seager now, a bit of a mongrel. The ball's gone back to Head. Head gets it out to Donger. Donger bobbing and weaving. He'll uh, go to the left hand side. It goes to Searles. Searles sees the gap and goes through it. Spargo. It goes to Frank Spencer. Frank gets up. That's on the fourth. He plays it back. It goes to Spargo. Spargo looking for the man inside. And it's Searles. And it goes to Frank. Frank's got Bolton outside. Gets it to... The referee hasn't called a touch. Oh, and a last ditch diving touch by Terry Jacks. Terry Hutchinson sitting down on the field. He hasn't got up. 
Now he limps back like a uh, distraught jumbo jet. What do you think now, Peter? Well, I think we're, we're right on top of them at the moment, Michael. We're playing up. We're really getting right up onto them. And throwing the ball around, as I said earlier in the first half, that's what we've got to do. A bit of variation. Throw the ball around, back up. I think we've got them. Just keep putting the pressure on them. The game's virtually all over. I think it, you know, it goes back to what Spargo says. It's good to be on top. That's right, exactly right. <laughs> It's good, a good position to be in. <laughs> I couldn't, couldn't agree with you there more, Michael. I, I haven't been in that position for a while, so I can't um, comment particularly, but we'll leave it at that, yeah. Jack's roughing around, and he's knocked it out. Thinks he's playing volleyball at the uh, New Chandler Sports Centre, I think. The ball comes back, and Donga Shipley, with glee written over his face. A long pass, it goes out to Paul Andrews. They've got to be careful for intercepts now, because it's a very vital stage of this game, this first 10 minutes of the second half. It goes to Andrews, and Andrews clapping on the pace. It's gone out to deep ass. He turns it back inside. Andrews caught there. Daryl Betts has come alive in these last few games. It goes to Spargo. He's got it out to Head. Head. The referee's called touch there on uh, the Turtle. Moving at a rapid pace today, the Turtle. Co-commentator Rick Donovan doing a bit of kindergarten work there. I'll call him up. I think he's gone down the sand pit. Country Club playing the ball there. It's gone to Spargo. Shippo. Oh. I noticed Terry Jack's diving and diving. That's got to take a lot out of you when you're diving on the ground and you have to get up and get back into position. They'll change possession there now. Bluey Jack's bringing up. He's caught there by Dago Thompson. He gets up and plays it back. It goes to Murray Creed. Murray Creed caught there by Peter Spargo. Men around the back. It gets to Mick Walker. Paul Shipley picking up Mick Walker there. They've picked it up well there. They've still got one-on-one. One on one. Terry Searle's moving up quick. The referee's called touch. They might have been lucky to get away off that one. Terry Searle's going back to the left-hand side. They'll go to the left, and they bring it back. It goes to Wayne Creed. I think that was Wayne Creed. The sun was shining off his head. I couldn't see for a minute. They've taken it the open side, but I don't know where he's, if he's going on a walkathon or what. But he's caught right over there, and your players don't like it when they have to run right across the field like that to try and back you up or get in position. There's the Dairy Maids warming up. We didn't get to see their striptease change act today. Perhaps after the game, some people might see them. What do you think, uh, Peter? <laughs> Jared sprinting. Turns it inside to Peter Spargo, and he's caught there. He'll get up and he'll play it back. He'll go to Postens. Postens gives it to Paul Shipley. It goes back to Jared Alexander. Alexander gives it to Frank Spencer. Yeah, that brother's playing well today. And it goes to Spargo. Spargo gives it to Dago. Oh, Dago at his best today. It goes to Spargo now. Spargo going up. He gives it to Frank. And taking towards the touchline, Dago quickly into position. They've got a man over there. I don't think they realise, but they had one over. Country Club have to move a bit quicker. Now Country Club have to play their guts out in this last 15, 20 minutes. It's gone to Bluey Jacks. Indecision creeping into Eagles camp. But in this game, one try can change the whole complexion of the game. They get up and they play it. Jared turned his back then. He shouldn't have done that. But Mick Walker... I don't know if he had dandruff or something, but Mick Walker dropped the ball when he saw Jared's back. What do you reckon, Rick Donovan? <clears throat> well, I think the, the pattern of this game's changed dramatically. Eagles are not as what they used to be or what they should be doing. They're a bit rattled and bunching in the middle, and I think if Country Club keep it up, they've got them shot to pieces. Couldn't have said it better myself, Rick. Goes to Frank back inside off a head loop. It's gone to head. It's gone out there. Donga leaving it behind. If it had been a six-pack, I think he would have picked it up. Coming back, shaking his hand. Slight injury there. Murray Creed playing the ball. The Creed brothers have played for Country Club previously. So has another Eagles player in Terry Hutchinson. This Country Club team playing very good football today. Defending their rings out. Frank missing there. They're trying desperation things, Eagles. But if you notice on the video, there was a gap there. The men just have to trail and pick it up. Country Club moving up. They've got to call that man. Call that man. That's six. They've got to hold that ball for six touches every time. Wouldn't you say so, Pete? That's right. Um, Country Club have got to hold it for six now. All they have to do is apply the pressure and the defence keep moving up exactly as they are doing. And um, they've definitely got this game at this stage but as Rick commented before it can change or it needs as an intercept try which there are some rather fast followers in the Eagles side and I think 
um, as the game gets on, I think they will be going for the intercept tries. I just hope we don't get washed away because Christopher's doing a leak on the hill. But as play goes on now, it goes to head. Country club needing to defend now. They've got to just run, run, run. They've got to put the pressure on, put the pressure on Eagles and keep them running. Searles comes back. He plays it to Postons. It goes out there to Andrews, to Dundak inside, and he's caught there. This is the fifth and final. They've got to take it wide. Nothing stupid. Oh, and that one was close. That one was very close. Funny Dunny was almost there. Mickey Walker coming off. I don't know if he's coming off for a chuck or a rest. Terry Jack's coming on. Also on the Elastoplast set. And it's Wayne Cree getting touched there. And if he doesn't take it back, it should be a penalty. The referee's picked it up again. I must compliment Cole Clark on the handling of the game today. Although he mightn't be five metres, he's consistent to both sides. And he stands both sides on the mark. As you can see, the touch is getting a bit harder there, and Country Club realise that the only way they're going to lose is by stupid mistakes if they get sucked in. Oh, Mark Shipley! Freddy's away! It goes out there to Funny Dunny, and he's caught by Stickman, covering a lot of ground. That's stupid play by Alan Dunn. Stupid play by Alan Dunn there. Oh. And as you can see, Country Club there were holding back. And you can't afford to do that against, you know, an A-grade grand final team. They've got to move up. They've got to put the pressure on them all the time. <coughs> Country Club coming back. Terry Postons, who's been whacking it up all day, plays it back. It goes to Head Andrews. Spargo stepping back inside using a Terry Jack Shepherd. Uh, it's a new law that's been introduced, the Terry Jack Shepherd. It's, uh, <laughs> it's legal in uh, Country Club Eagles matches. Anyway, the ball's gone out to Mark Shipley. Spargo coming into dummy half. Funny Dunny running around like he's got something wrong with his feet. It's gone out there to Jimmy Gibson. Jimmy Gibson will be caught. And Dago Thompson getting back quickly. Tries to give uh, Wayne Creed a headbutt. And I think he killed about another two hairs. Which, you know, a bloke like Wayne can't afford. Dago to play it there. Jared Alexander. Country Club have to change their players around. Jimmy Gibson caught there. And they've got a count, 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 run, run, run. Did not play the ball. He had to pick it up. And Terry Hutchinson going back to the Qantas hanger now, not looking too impressed. I think Butch, um, I think uh, Eagles are starting to panic. Uh, you know, they're just not even playing the ball properly and uh, not even passing the ball, dropping the ball. And I think it's just this continual pressure from the Country Club boys that has put them under a bit of bit of pressure and they're starting to fold. Oh, and that was almost another one. But once again, I, I'd like to say that Country Club, that was the second touch. And, you know, those things are good if they come off, but you can't afford to give possession back on the second touch. They have to come off. Keegs rucking it up. He's caught there by Head. He plays it back to Terry Jacks, who gives it to Greg. Terry Jacks going around. Head's call him there. He gets up. Goes to Keegs. Keegs rucking it up in his wheelchair. He's caught there by uh, Dunny. The ball going wide has gone to Wayne Creed. I think that's Wayne. That sun's bad on his head today. It's come out to Terry Jacks, who gives it to Terry Elastoplast Hutchinson. It goes to Stickman, and Stickman's caught there. And the referee says, that'll be six. And the crowd just loving it here today. The crowd on the other side of the field, that is. As it goes to... It goes out to Spargo to Head. Head running across. I thought Wayne was going to do a stock take on him then. It's gone out to Dunny. Gives it to Mark Shipley, and that one was very close. Very close. What do you reckon, Barry? Uh, Barry's gone to sleep again. Mark uh, Spargo bobbing around. He's turned it back. It's gone to... And they've got the overlap. Oh, six to go, six to go. And if you have a look, Dave Bolton on that far side was unmarked. Jared Alexander doing everything he could to get the ball across there, but now they have to hold that ball for six. As you can see, Eagles defence, they're diving. They're diving for touches. Murray Creed missed that one. Dunny coming up. He can't get sucked in. Now they've got to play it quick and get them caught offside. Goes to Spargo. Spargo stepping back inside. A brilliant player for Country Club this year, Spargo. Had a great year for Country Club. And surely must be a state representative this year. Comes back to Spargo. They'll take the ball to the sideline. Searles. And Searles almost through. Keegs grabbed him then. Proceedings going the way you uh, would hope, Peter? Yeah, they've just got to hold on. They've got to keep holding on. They've got the advantage. They've just got to keep holding on. <laughs> Stickman caught there. Terry Postens getting there quickly. Terry Jacks. Terry Postens took... Oh, an intercept. 
Terry Postens, how did you do that? I think he must have had Tarzan grip on his hand that time. A great catch. It goes out to Jared Alexander taking it up, remembering the losing side for Nudgy Knobs when the Eagles beat them. Country Club determined not to give this one away. Jack's throwing his arms around like he was in the uh, car park at Dorrington Park. They go with the ball now. It goes back. It goes back and it's caught there. Mark Shipley caught with the ball. Terry Jack's wanting to get on with it. It goes to Tony Jacks. Bluey gives it to Greg Spargo trailing there. Mark Shipley coming across. They've got to reform this line. They've got to keep going now. They can't afford to let them back into the game. Terry Jacks. Greg coming in and that brother moving up very quick there. Must have more here today. Anyway, Bluey Jacks looking and Frank's got him again and Mark took the wrap. This is good touch football as it's gone to Greg. Kev Hickey coming through and he's caught by two players there. They're watching the man at the back today and they're picking up everyone. Everyone's marking someone as Hutch tries to go. Falls back inside. Falls out of his wheelchair. Gets back into it. Stick man running the open. As only the stick man can do. The ball goes down. That's six and Country Club must hold the ball for six touches now. Mark Shipley coming off this side. Big brother Donga Shipley coming back on. Jared bobbing and weaving. It looked like Keegs wanted to have a dance with him then. It comes back to Spargo now. Spargo knows what's required in these situations. He's not going to throw it away. It, Spencer taking it up. Would have been good for Donga to be outside him then, but Betsy's over here. DA, not the district attorney either. Paul Shipley caught there with the ball. He gets up and plays it back. It comes out to Peter Spargo. Spargo taking it back to Frank Spencer. Spencer stepping back inside Greg. He gives it to Paul Shipley. Paul Shipley going back the blind side. Gives it out to Betts and the referee's call. Touch on Paul Shipley and the referee will bring it back. Fifth and last. And they'll take it to the sideline. And that could have been the intercept. You don't do things like that. Although you'll laugh while watching this video, Spag. Frank taking the ball. He gives it back to Postens. Postens taking it up. And notice, notice Eagles diving. And this is a poor sign when they have to dive all the time. And it's taking something out of it. As you can see, Bluey Jacks, he can hardly go on. And he can't change yet because you can only change an attack. Unless you play for United. As you can see, he's just changed. It's gone to Postens. It's gone to Bolton. Bolton with the stick man there. This is fifth and last. Gerald. Postens rucking it up. Oh, and that one could have been close too. The referees call it back for the sixth and final. Time ticking away in this grand final. I'd say there'd be about eight minutes to go. As they bring it up, Mick Walker rucking it up. It's gone to Wayne Creed. He's got, he's got Hutchinson back inside, but couldn't get it to him. Mick Walker going to dummy half. Gets up, gives it to Hutchinson. posy has got him, and Posse takes him there. Spargo taking the mark now. It's gone to Murray Creed. He gives it out to Big Mick. Big Mick just standing there like a shag on a rock. Couldn't go on with it. Greg coming through, running across field. I think he's going over to play cricket on the pitch and the referee's called touch there. We'll call John Thompson over for expert comments in a minute. Mickey Walker's there. The ball's been played back. They're just throwing the ball. They're hoping that someone's going to be there. But Country Club rallying. Nothing stupid, Country Club. Just play the ref. No stupid penalties. Hold that ball for six touches. Wouldn't you say so, John Thompson? Yes, I, yes, I think so, Michael. Um, you did mention before that some of the Eagles played in the reserve grade. Well, I think it's paying off now. They seem to be very tired. and uh, Paying off for us or them? Paying off for us, obviously, because as the score indicates, and also the um, run of the game in the second half. Um, you're right, Butch. As play goes on. Time ticking away in this very important 1981 grand final from Tawong, brought to you by Brisbane Trophy Centre, where you can go like Shane Whitney and buy your tattoos. Dave Bolton's taken up there on the fifth, and that's all they want, just a settler on the fifth. They can reform their defence right across the field, so every player knows who's got who. They've got to keep moving up. Terry Sills has got to run up there and keep going this half. Hutchinson gets it to, to Kevin. Kev caught there. By head and notice the expression, the way he put the ball down there, he's disgusted. Maury Creed's got the ball, turning it back. Terry Hutchinson caught there by Alan Dunn. They've got up. Kev trying to beat the man. He's given it out. Terry Jack's caught there. Seeger seems to be running on better on the sideline than Jacksy. Gets up, plays it back. It goes to Big Mick Walker, rucking it up. 
and they're looking a bit tight for those inside passes. Country Club have to keep going, but as I said before, there was no man over there. Daryl Betts coming in, and he's turning in his third great game in as many weeks. A great end of the season. Was pretty pathetic throughout most of it, but he's making up for it now. It's gone to Paul Shipley, and there's a gap. There's a gap that you could drive bloody Foxy's nose through. And Country Club have got to run on. It goes to Head. He gets it out to Dunny. Funny Dunny juggles it, but gets it then. Head gets it and plays it. It goes to Ellie. Uh, oh, long pass. It goes out to Bolton. And Bolton caught there. He'll get up and play it. It goes to Head. Poston's coming back on for Alexander. It's on to Searles, rucking it up. He's making those metres, as you can see. You know, uh, Eagles players diving once again. And they're feeling the pinch. Country Club have to keep going. That's it. Take it down the blind. Just settle it. Terry Jacks, I feel, getting a bit frustrated at this time. This is the game. It doesn't matter minor premierships or anything else or knockout games, you know. This is the one. As Hutchinson gets the ball and brings it up. Done with the ball. Hutchinson did not stop. He kept going. Voluntary touch and the referee says penalty, Country Club. Country Club will try nothing fancy now. Oh, they're going to use going to use the Souths too here. And rucking it up. They've nothing stupid. Just pin them down here, just hold them down. Because I've doubt if they've got the strength to make make the tries even if they make the breaks. I think the defence will back up. Paul Shipley again almost through and the praying Mandus Mick Walker's just picked him up. It's gone to Postons. There's a penalty. Now just hold it, Country Club. Nothing fancy. Moves aren't the answer here. Gets up, it goes to Terry Searles. He'll just take it up. Ducks under the first one from Kev Hickey. Brings the ball back. Doesn't matter how long he takes because time's important. Especially to Eagles. Shipley standing there, getting him flat-footed. Goes across field. He had no one on that side, but... As you can hear, Shane Whitney screaming out, Come on, Country Club. Alan Dunn at dummy half. It goes to Paul Shipley. Shipley bringing it up. He's caught there quickly by Kev Hickey. They'll take it to the left-hand wing here. Alan Dunn will get it and go himself. They'll take it across so they can set their defensive pattern. And as you can see, that's exactly what they do. Taking it to the left. Peter Spargo on the sideline recovering, getting ready for that final assault. And that was almost a voluntary touch then by Terry Jacks. As Kev Hickey gets it, it goes to Terry Hutchinson. Terry Hutchinson going across field. Stick man inside, and he's dropped it. If that was a choo-choo bar, I reckon he would have held on to it. <laughs> Anyway, Gavin, I don't know if he's psyched out of it or what. Head gets up and plays it back. It goes to Jimmy Gibson. Gibson gets it and gives it to Paul Shipley. Shipley bobbing and stopping. Jimmy Gibson, a dummy half. Head coming around the back. They've got a hold of the six. Alan Dunn caught the ball, but they got caught in possession. Very poor. Terry Jacks gets up and he plays it back. And it's going to Mick Walker out to Tony Jacks. Tony Jacks running across field. That's the fastest I've seen him run in 10 years. It's gone back to, Blue, uh, to stick man. Mick Walker making the break. Country Club picking him up, Terry Postons. They've just got to fix that line up, and the line doesn't look too bad at the moment. Caught with the ball, Terry Postons. A great effort by Terry Postons, turning in a blinder today. Vivid memories of, of past defeats at the hands of Eagles, and they want to pluck the feathers off these birds today. Wouldn't you say so, Rick? I think they've just about done that, Butch. With about five or ten minutes to go, I think it's all over by the shouting, mate. Over. Country Club have got to defend now and keep them out. But Thing, stuffed. Things, like, stuffed. things like that have happened bef before. And I see a few pigeons flying over and I don't know if they're late replacements or what. Anyway, as play goes on... Bit of paper, mate. Hold it down. Uh, we've got trouble up here in the commentary box. Fifth touch. And they've got to take it to a sideline. They'll take it to the left. It goes to Jimmy Gibson. He's got head outside him. He'll give it to head. Head almost through. Drops the ball. Spargo dictating turns from the sideline. Like ben, Bernie Pramberg would. You can't turn this microphone off, can you, you said? No. Yeah. <laughs> As play goes on, it's gone to Kev. Kev Hickey trying to line someone up. Terry Jacks at dummy half. He gives it to Bluey Jacks. Terry Jacks running around, and the three of them ran in, looking like the three Stooges there. Low, Mo, Larry, and of course Curly. But here's the break, here's the break. They've got the defence, and the ball away, referee, he's calling touch. Watch what I'll just say. The ball coming this way, Greg, and the game's not over yet, there's time to go. There's time to go. Set up the defence! As ball goes back to the open side, it goes to Gavin George. 
and they've got it. That's six. The game is not over until that full-time hooter. That is when it's over. Country Club rucking it up now. The shoe's on the other foot. They've got to defend. They've got to ruck that ball up. Come on. Hard With the ball now. Mark Shipley caught there. He plays it back. It goes to Terry Searles. Gives it Alan Dunn. Dunn gets up. Goes to Searles. Goes to Spargo. Spargo back on the field now, re realising that a skipper's innings is needed. They take it to the blind side, and Alan Dunn will be quite prepared to take the touch over there. There's only three to four minutes to go in this very exciting grand final. Terry Hutchinson takes the touch off Searles there. They get up and play it. It comes out to Kev Hickey. Kev Hickey's the one who's trying to get players to run off him. But Country Club coming across. Spargo's called a touch on Hickey, and he'll be called back there. As you can hear, the crowd getting very excited now. Oh, sorry. I just kissed, kicked Chris in the head. <laughs> As <laughs> Murray Creed gets up and plays it back, it comes out to Kev Hickey. Kev Hickey coming through, and there's the overlap. And, oh, Terry Searles, I think, just got him. Country Club defending grimly now as it goes to Keegs, one of the speed men. And he's caught. This is the one. This is the one. They've got to hold it for this one. If they can hold it for this one. It... How long did it stop for? Just a minute. Sorry for that audio visual uh, interference then. The play's gone on. The play's been pretty tight. It's gone to Wayne Creed. They've got to move up both sides of the ruck. Don't hang off. Move up. And Kev caught with the ball. Come on, Country Club. You have to move up now. It's gone to Frank. Betty, Betty catching him there. Murray Creek coming around. It's gone to Greg. They're wrapping. They're trying everything. But here's the try. Here's the touch. Here's the touch. No. Peter Spargo's called touch. Peter Spargo's called touch. And I know Peter Spargo. I know Peter Spargo, and I would guarantee Peter Spargo would not lie. He would have definitely touched him. There is the hooter. That is the hooter. And that is victory. The hooter's gone. That is it. We have won. Have a look at Country Club. They are jumping. They are happy. Have a look at Eagles. They are silent birds. And this is the day that we have been waiting for. We have picked up a lot of money today. $100 from Eagles, and I think they've only got $87 in their bank account, so they could be in difficulty. We might have to repossess three jerseys or Terry Jacks' muzzle. But have a look at the boys down there. Have a look at over the other side. Have a look at the supporters. And a very disappointed lot. Eagles entering today's grand final with three teams. They lost in the C grade to St. Joseph's. They won the reserve grade, but they paid the penalty for playing players in the reserve grade. And they can please themselves but it's much better to get a winner's medal in A grade than a reserve grade. So I doubt this year we'll be seeing Terry Jacks and the rest of his gang doing a Mexican hat dance on top of the table. And there they are, the boys down there, very excited. As the players walk off the field.